What's going on, YouTube fam? This is the Wealth Investing Network. We do this for the win. You're getting a sneak peek into my stock portfolio and a sneak peek into my research on stocks. Today, we are looking at Dick Sporting Goods versus their competition in the market. That includes Academy Sports and Outdoors and American Outdoor Brands. And there's also Sportsman's Warehouse, but they're getting bought out by the privately held owner of Bass Pro Shops and also Cabela's. So we're not really going to focus on Sportsman's Academy and American Outdoor Brands will be the primary competitors on the stock market. And that's what we're going to focus on. And we're going to talk about which ones are undervalued. Before we get into it, I have to ask you to please hit that like button. Turn it blue. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for the YouTube AI. Also, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. If you're here to watch my journey, great, because these videos are for entertainment. Let's jump into Robin Hood. Okay, so we have Dick's Sporting Goods. They're a very popular retailer for sports equipment, apparel, footwear, things of that nature. Dick's Sporting Goods has over 850 stores all over the country. So you don't see a ton of growth on their five-year stock chart. We definitely see some choppiness, but they do pay a dividend of, over, of just over 2%. So you get that nice little thank you in your account. And there's still potential the stock could take off. You could have doubled your money if you had invested in March or April. Their last earnings report showed they had a very strong quarter. And they were strong in both in-store and online sales. Management also sees an opportunity for growth with their private label business. Basically, you could go to their store and get Nike or Under Armour or whatever, but you could also go there and get their DSG brand that they make and could potentially be more profitable for them. So that's great. And this article goes on to talk about the fact that they're well positioned in the long term despite any near-term volatility. Uh, it's also noteworthy that they picked a new CEO after Edward Slack stepped down after 30 years. And yes, their business was impacted by the worldwide health crisis, but they recovered very quickly. As you can see, after Q1, they had stronger than expected earnings. The pandemic essentially just accelerated their online sales growth. And the big question is, what will 2021 look like for them? As you can see, here are some of their stores and the sports equipment they sell. Drop a comment if you've ever been in one of these stores. Oh, but wait, I think this is a good time to talk about Academy Sports and Outdoors because the last couple of pictures I just showed you were actually the inside of Academy store. I mentioned that their stores are pretty similar in the last video I did about Academy and Dick Sporting Goods. If you want more information, please check out that video because I wanna move quickly here. Academy launched on the stock market earlier this year, back in October. When you take a look at their stock chart, they're doing very well. I'm long this stock and you can see my average cost here. But with only three months really to look at, this really isn't a lot to go off of. The juicier content is in the analysis, which we'll get to in a little bit. But like I said in my last video, most of their stores are in the South. And in the last few years, there's been a shift with Dick Sporting Goods as they made the choice to not sell semi-automatic weapons or weapons at all. Dick's moved away from selling weapons in the wake of some of the mass shootings. And I don't think they will be selling weapons in their store after this year. To my knowledge, Academy will continue to sell weapons. Speaking of weapons, this is a good transition to talk about American outdoor brands because they were a spinoff from the firearms maker Smith & Wesson Brands. And you can see Smith & Wesson Brands here, ticker SWBI. And it might have seemed strange that Smith & Wesson Brands decided to delve into the rugged outdoors industry as a whole, but either way, investors seem to like the idea of them spinning off that part of their brand. And so again, not a ton of information to go off here with the stock chart. So let me give a quick plug to check out Robinhood and check out Weeble. They've helped me a lot on this journey. And if you do your research and wanna try them, I have links in the description that can help us both get free stocks together. And I'll open mine live in future videos like I did in this video in the card. Okay, back to American Outdoor Brands. According to the National Shooting Sports Foundation, almost 8 million gun owners were created this year as background checks by the FBI and potential gun buyers soared to record highs in 2020. And I agree with the article that this could drive sales for gear like camping, hunting, and fishing equipment. This could be huge for the stock as well. So let's jump into my quick analysis of these companies. This is just based on rough estimates of what I could find. And I talked in my last video a lot about Dick Sporting Goods and Academy Sports and Outdoors, so I'm really not gonna dwell on it. But as you can see, Dick Sporting Goods is the largest company and American Outdoor Brands is 
a much smaller company. Like I said, it's a spinoff of Smith & Wesson. We've got the P-E ratios or price to earnings. This is pretty solid for Dick's Sporting Goods. The average for the S&P 500 is around 20. And Academy and American Outdoor Brands are growth companies. So that's something to keep in mind. We've got the price to sales ratios the revenue. And we talk a lot about the price to sales ratio because it represents the multiple, or actually in some cases, the fraction that you're paying because for every dollar of sales, this is what you're paying for the market cap. And American Outdoor Brands has the strongest revenue growth on the day. But I would give it some time because they did break off from Smith & Wesson Brands, so they kind of have to get their feet under them, if you know what I mean. And I think that's part of why this net income margin comes in negative. 4% from Dick Sporting Goods and Academy is a much better number. But American Outdoor Brands is the winner on this new number, the current ratio. This figure, simply put, is assets over liabilities. Dick Sporting Goods and Academy Sports and Outdoors have a lot more liabilities, specifically a lot more debt. Dick's and Academy have a ton of stores and they had to take out a lot of debt to get where they are today. But as long as we're seeing strong sales numbers, that's not a big concern. But if you like to see very little debt on a balance sheet, American Outdoor Brands might be better for you because I think they actually have more cash on hand than debt, while Dick's Sporting Goods and Academy have close to $2 billion in debt. And so finally, the revenue growth forecast is flat, but with the retail industry, 2021 is kind of a toss up. And we have the analyst target mean prices here. Mean stands for average. So honestly, I like all three of these companies. I'm long ASO, as I said, because right now you're paying a fraction of their actual sales. And I'm confident that the debt burden is not gonna be detrimental to the stock. And that's actually what happened to Sports Authority. And they didn't manage their debt well, but I think these companies in this market won't face that same problem, at least not based on what I'm seeing right now. And I think 2021 could be a very strong year for sports, especially outdoor sports. And I'm hoping we'll actually get to a point where we can have the Olympics in 2021. But overall, I think based on the numbers, these stocks are very strong. They're not trading at a high multiple or even a multiple at all, really. So I would declare all three winners. But hey, I'm just a guy on YouTube. If you wanna share what you know, drop a comment. I'll try to respond. While you're there, hit that like and the subscribe because it helps us grow and it helps me provide better content for you. That's a win-win and we like that here at the Wealth Investing Network. I'm not on social media. This is really just about sharing knowledge on this platform. So drop a comment or send me an email at thewealthinvestingnetwork at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Try to enjoy some fun in the sun. See you in the next video.